Hey everyone and welcome back. In this video, we are going to be talking about eigen decomposition, how it works, what it tries to achieve, and why it's useful. As the name suggests, at the core of this transformation is the word eigen. And if you are not familiar with the eigenvectors and eigenvalues, I've added some references in the description that I advise you to watch before this video to get more familiar with this concept. In short, when you have a square matrix, you can use it to transform each vector in the space and map it somewhere else within the same space. And usually, most of the vectors don't land on the same axis when this happens. However, there is a special class of vectors that do indeed land on the same axis, and most likely you have guessed by now, those are the eigenvectors of this matrix. To put this into more mathematical terms, we have that our matrix A multiplied by the eigenvector U is equal to U multiplied by scalar value lambda, which is the eigenvalue corresponding to that eigenvector, and which tells us how much we have to stretch the eigenvector to land in the same spot as if we multiply the same vector by A. In a nutshell, for those special vectors, A becomes equivalent to a multiplication by a scalar, which is a wonderful result in linear algebra, and we could talk a lot by its implications, but unfortunately, this is not the focus of this video, and again, if you want to study this subject into more details, you can find some references in the description below. So, after this short recap of what eigenvectors and eigenvalues are, let's go back to the subject of this video, the eigen decomposition. This transformation can be easily derived by writing the definition of eigenvectors and eigenvalues in a more compact form. So, let's assume that we have a square 3x3 matrix A and its corresponding three eigenvectors U1, U2, and U3 with the corresponding eigenvalues lambda1, lambda2, and lambda3. Now, we have that A multiplied by U1 is equal to lambda1 multiplied by U1, a multiplied by u2 is equal to lambda2 multiplied by u2, and A multiplied by u3 is equal to lambda3 multiplied by u3. Now we can put these n equations into a matrix form. So we have the matrix A on the left of the equation, put u1, u2, and u3, which again are the normalized eigenvectors into their own matrix, and just to be more explicit, here the first column is u1, the second column is u2, and the third column is u3. We can do the same thing on the right side of the equation. We put the eigenvectors in their own n by n matrix and multiply it with a diagonal matrix lambda1, lambda2, and lambda3. And if we were to perform these matrix multiplications in these equations, we would observe that we get the same equations as before. Great, so now we have a multiplied by u is equal to u multiplied by lambda. Finally, we just have to perform one more step to obtain the eigen decomposition of matrix A, which is multiplying by the inverse of U on the right. And here we have it, the eigen decomposition of matrix A. We have the eigenvector matrix U multiplied by the diagonal matrix that contains the eigenvalues multiplied by the inverse of U. However, you may start wondering, why is this actually useful at all? What do we get by taking a square matrix and splitting it up into these three component matrices? Well, consider this very, very common routine procedure we need to perform in any subfield of machine learning, which involves applying the same linear transformation again and again to a vector, or in other terms, taking a matrix to a power P. If you simply compute this operation in a broad force way, you'd obtain P matrix multiplications, which is kind of bad from a performance point of view, if P is very large. What you can do instead is to group those matrices together and let's say that we want to compute A to the power of 8. Firstly, we compute A squared so that one matrix multiplication, then using A squared we can compute A to the power of 4, and now that we have A to the power of 4, we can compute a to the power of 8 by taking the square of a to the power of 4. Well, with this simple trick, we reduce the 8 matrix multiplications to 3, or log 2 of p in more general terms, which is kinda good. However, the fastest way of computing a to the power of p is by eigen decomposing a, as we have shown above. So now, when you compute a to the power of p, we have u multiplied by lambda, multiplied by the inverse of u, multiplied by u, multiplied by lambda, multiplied by the inverse of u, and so on. 
And because the matrix multiplication is associative, we can group together the matrix U multiplied by the inverse of U, resulting in the identity matrix. Thus, what we get in the end is U multiplied by lambda P times multiplied by the inverse of U. Or, in a shorter form, U multiplied by the matrix lambda to the power of P multiplied by the inverse of U. And, because lambda is diagonal, we don't have to perform log 2 of P matrix multiplications, we just have to raise each term on the diagonal the eigenvalues to the power of P. If you ask me, that's a pretty amazing result, because, in the end, instead of log 2 of P matrix multiplications, we compute just two matrix multiplications, U multiplied by lambda to the power of P, multiplied by the inverse of U, for any P, no matter how large P is. Finally, before ending this video, I would like to talk about a very special case of eigen decomposition, and that's when our input matrix is a symmetric matrix. What happens in this case is that our normalized eigenvectors are orthonormal, so when we put them in a matrix, we get an orthogonal matrix. Thus, the eigen decomposition of a symmetric matrix can be visualized as a transformation that first rotates the vector, then stretches it, and then rotates it back. Let's see what I mean by that, by looking at how a symmetry matrix transforms a smiley face. We can consider each pixel in the image as being a vector, and let's say that we want to transform all the vectors in this image using the following symmetric matrix. Well, if you were to decompose it, then the transformation that S would apply to our image would be equivalent to firstly rotating the image, stretching it, and then rotating it back, obtaining the same end result. Pretty cool, right? Well, this last part of the video lays the foundation for another video I want to create in the near future. One where I explain how not only a square matrix can be decomposed in such a way, but any matrix, a technique known as singular value decomposition. And we'll see in it how this is achieved. And that's basically how eigen decomposition works. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button if you did. I can't say enough how much this helps me with the algorithm. Also, let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe, if you haven't already, to stay tuned with the new video I am going to release. See you next time. Bye bye.